Hi, welcome to this tutorial on transforming trigonometric graphs. Now before we start, what you should be familiar with is the three graphs of y equals sine x, y equals cos x and y equals tan x. These are going to form the base graphs that we're going to transform. And in this tutorial what we're going to look at is the transformation y equals k times f of x where k is a positive constant. And what this does to any graph, whether it be a trigonometric graph or another graph, it represents a stretch parallel to the y-axis of scale factor k where the x-axis is invariant. And to start this, what I've got is a set of axes going from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. And if we were to look at the graph of y equals sine x, I've let f of x be the sine x, then we're going to get the familiar graph like this. As I say, you should know this graph. It goes from minus 1 to 1. It peaks at 1 at 90 degrees and at minus 270 degrees. And its lowest value of minus 1 is at minus 90 and 270 degrees. Now, what happens if we were to consider this particular transformation? y equals 2f of x. In which case, if f of x is sine x, we're going to get 2 sine x. What does this do to the graph? Well, what it does, it doubles all the y values. So if you've got a value here which has a y value at 1, then if you double that value, you're going to get it going to 2. And similarly, this point, this y value here, which is at minus 1, if you were to double that value, it's going to go to minus 2. It would drop down to here. A point like this one, if it was, say, half a unit up, is now going to be doubled and is going to appear at 1. And can you see what we're going to get? We're going to get a stretched out graph parallel to the y-axis where we have invariant points, that's these points, are going to stay put. OK, let's show you. OK, here it is, the graph then of y equals 2f of x, 2 sine x. OK, so you can see that that point here is double that point there. If we had a point at a half here, double it, it's going to go to 1 for this particular x value. OK, let's look at another one. Let's suppose we look at now at y equals 3f of x, our constant k is the positive number 3. So we get 3 sine x. You might like to sketch this graph. Just pause the video and I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. OK, let's see how you got on. Well, this point here with a y value of 1 is now multiplied by 3, so it's now going to go up to 3. And this lowest point here at minus 1 is now going to be multiplied by 3 and go to minus 3. It'll be down here. And all of these points on the x-axis are going to stay exactly the same, invariant. If you multiplied their y value by 3, 3 times 0 is still going to be 0. That's why they stay put on the x-axis. So your graph should look something like that. OK, we're not just going to look at sine x. We're going to look at the graphs of cos x and tan x. So let's start now with the graph of y equals cos x. And I'll give you a few graphs to sketch. OK, well, here's the graph of y equals cos x. I've let f of x this time be cos x. So, you'll see that it peaks at 1 on the y-axis, and you'll see it's 1 at 360 degrees and at minus 360 degrees. It's negative 1 at minus 180 and 180 degrees. It passes through 
the points on the x-axis at minus 270, minus 90, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Okay, as an exercise, you might like to try this. I'd like you to try and sketch the graphs of y equals 2f of x, that would be 2 cos x, and the graph of y equals 3 f of x, 3 cos x. And also, just going to introduce you to another one, y equals a half f of x, 0.5 f of x, so that's going to be 0.5 cos x. So pause the video, have a go at sketching those graphs, and when you're ready, just come back and we'll quickly go through them. Okay, well let's see how you got on. For the graph of 2 cos x, did you get that? Notice how our points are pulled out, multiplied by 2, so you're going to get this point being multiplied by 2, so it gets doubled, so it goes up to 2. This point at minus 1 gets doubled, goes down to minus 2, and so on. What about 3 cos x? You should have this graph pulled out to 3 and down to minus 3. And what about this one, half f of x? Half cos x in this case, your graph should look like this, which I've done in the dotted line. Instead of it going up to 1, we halve the value, so half of 1 is a half, so you should have it crossing the y-axis at a half. And the lowest point is at minus a half, okay? There you go, the lowest point minus a half. So let's do the same now for the graph of y equals tan x and give you a few to sketch there. So what we've got here is y equals f of x which equals tan x, f of x being the tan x. And what I'd like you to try is to sketch the graph of 2 tan x, that's that one, and a half tan x. Okay, so just again pause the video and come back and we'll run through these ones. Okay, well let's see how you got on. Now with this graph, we've got to remember double all the points if we're going to look at the graph of 2 tan x. And so if you've got a point like this one here, you can see its y value is 1. If you double it, it's now going to be a point that's about there. If you've got this point up here, which is at 2, if you double it, it's now going to be at 4 for the same x value. And the same is going to happen with the negative values. You should find that you get a graph looking something like this. And what about the graph y equals a half then of f of x, half tan x, 0.5 tan x? Our values now are all going to be halved. Our y values are going to be halved. So you should have a graph looking something like this. It's still got much the kind of same shape as the original graph. So hopefully you've got some idea now how to sketch trigonometric graphs when we're using this particular transformation. Y equals k times f of x, where k is a positive constant. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.